on balls in a polygonal Hilbert geometry by Frank Nielsen and Letitia Shaw. Hilbert geometry is a metric geometry introduced by David Hilbert as a generalization of the Kelly Klein model. In this video, we explain the shape of balls and their properties in a convex polygonal Hilbert geometry. The Hilbert metric is defined using the cross ratio. Given four collinear points of a projective space, the cross ratio is defined as a ratio of distances between the four points. A fundamental property of the cross ratio that we'll use throughout the video is its projective invariance. Given two sets of four points related by your projective transformation, the two sets have the same cross ratio. As we can see on the animation, moving the points along the lines doesn't change the value of the cross ratio. On the other hand, moving the lines changes the value of the cross ratio, but the two cross ratios remain equal. In a Hilbert geometry, considering two distinct points A and B inside a bounded convex domain C, we consider the intersection points of the domain boundary with the line AB. The Hilbert distance is then defined using the logarithm of the cross ratio of the four points considered on the figure. This distance is extended so that two identical points have a distance of zero between them. It is also a signed metric that respects the triangular inequality. The boundary of the convex polygonal domain represents the line at infinity for this metric. In this video, we focus on Hilbert geometries defined on a convex polygonal domain with S edges. We will visualize and give properties on Hilbert balls, which we define as the set of points that have an absolute distance of at most R from a given center point. Let us first visualize Hilbert balls in a simplex domain. Here, we trace a single Hilbert ball in a triangular domain and move its center point. Although the shape of the ball varies, we can observe that the combinatorial complexity remains the same. In this case, Hilbert balls are hexagons, convex polygons with six edges. However, in non-simplex domains, Hilbert balls have varying combinatorial complexity that depend on the position of the center in the domain. Here, in a square domain, depending on the position of the center, the Hilbert ball is polygonal with six, eight, or four edges. The same can be observed in a generic quadrangle. When the center lies at the center of the domain, the Hilbert ball has four edges. When the center lies on a diagonal, the Hilbert ball has six edges. We also observe that a ball with varying radius never changes shape. When the radius of the Hilbert ball increases, the ball shape tends to cover the full domain. However, the number of edges always remains the same. We observed that Hilbert balls have Euclidean convex polygonal shapes. In all cases, each vertex of a ball lies on a ray passing through the center of the ball and the vertex of the domain. In this video, the ball moves inside the triangle and the rays are traced in thick red. The location of vertices helps us understand the combinatorial complexity of a Hilbert ball. If the domain has S edges, a Hilbert ball has at most two S edges. Generally, the Hilbert ball has two S vertices lying on rays, but when the center moves, distinct rays may coincide, thus reducing the number of vertices of the Hilbert ball. We will now sketch a proof for the complexity and the location of vertices in two dimensions. We first decompose the domain in at most two S triangles by tracing the rays. The goal is to show that the triangle induces one linear edge of the Hilbert ball. If P is a point on the Hilbert ball and B the intersection point of two edges, the line passing through B and P clipped to the triangle is an edge of the ball. Using the projective invariance property, it can be shown that any point on this segment belongs to an edge of the Hilbert ball. Finally, let us study the intersection of two Hilbert spheres. Because the Hilbert metric respects the triangular inequality, the criteria of an empty intersection is the same as in Euclidean geometry. If the centers are too close or too far away, 
the spheres will not intersect. Here, in the triangular domain, we consider the intersection of the red sphere with the blue sphere. As long as the centers are far enough from one another, they do not intersect. Similarly, if the two centers are too close, the intersection of the spheres is empty. We now show what happens when two spheres are tangent to one another. In this square domain, the red sphere is externally tangent to the blue sphere. We observe that the two spheres sometimes share part of an edge or a vertex. In the triangular domain, the red sphere is now internally tangent to the blue sphere and share part of one or two edges with the blue sphere.